ואני רואה שהוא מוטל להדליק בפרמוס, שכל נאום פעם מאחר שכל נאום מוב דל הרבה מחברו. However, the, the lamp they used to have, the, the one hanging from the ceiling which was round, he said that is okay because each ner is very, is very far away from um, the, the, sorry? No. Another no. one, yeah. Each one is far away from the other one, so therefore there's no, no chashash they're going to join together. When one's making nails out of um, wax, one should be careful not to stick them together. Again, they can join together and be like a, a bonfire. Also with nails of Shabbos and Yontif. Um, so the Gemara is going to say that there's no chashash they're going to join together. Um, Sif Kotten um, um, Tess uh, Zion Sif Kotten Tess Zion In which uh, We're in Sif Dalit In Dalit? Same place we're in Just at the bottom Sif Tess Six lines from the Seven lines from the bottom Six lines from the bottom Sif Kotten Tess Zion yeah. To have a Kamadora ואם יש הפסק מחיצה ביניה לנה, הוא כרוך אף אצבע ביניה, הן מוטה. ואפילו לא יקרוף על הכלי. So he gives you a share of how, how, how far apart they should be, so we haven't got this problem at all. So it's very clear, there has to be a hefsek uh, of the width, a finger width between them. And also a mechitza. A mechitza, this is where you're lighting with wicks and oil. If you just have a, a finger width between them and there's, and there's no partition, they're just going to float together. So you need some sort of partition to hold them apart. Um, and also to have a finger width. And then you haven't got a problem with them joining together. Um, with a width wax handle, then you wouldn't need a partition because they're not going to float together. Okay, let's continue now with the, the next sif. Sif hey. Back to the shulchan of sif hey. Ne'er chanaka manichoi al pesach hasomak lishuzav. And the question here is, where do we light ne'er chanaka? Where to put it? So the shulchan of says that one places it, al pesach hasomak lishuzav. He puts it by his entrance. The entrance which leads out to the public thoroughfare. on the outside of the entrance. If the if the house opens out into the shusharabim, he puts it by his entrance. If he has a court a yard in front of his house, then he places it. He leaves it by the entrance of the between the chotzer and the public thoroughfare, not by the entrance to his house, but by the entrance between the, 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 the gate from the, from the, the yard, the, the courtyard to the um, street. If he lives in an attic, he has to go through someone's house to get to um, the Rishos Harabim. For example, a lodger maybe who has a room inside someone's house. Um, he goes through the house in order to get to his room. Manicho b'chaloin, then he places it by the window, the window which looks out onto the street. Hasamuch l'shus ha'rabim. U'bishash ha'sakono, she'einu rishayla kaim ha'mitzvah. In the times of Sakona, when the Goyim, um, wouldn't, the, the Jews wouldn't be allowed to, wouldn't be able to light outside um, because it was, it was dangerous. Manicho ya'al shulchon e'vedayu, then he can just place it on his shulchon, in the times of Zakona, he wouldn't even be able to light by the window because the goyim would see it through the window. So he would just place it on the table, v'dayu, and that's good enough. Okay, v'tzorich. Okay, let's let's stop here. What is the part of the building that has rough cord, right? And you're yes. on the top floor. Yes. You don't go through somebody else's house. You right. just have a stairwell. Right, right, right. Can you then do right. the window? Right. So let's talk about that. Let's do a few lines in the Mishabura, and then we're going to talk about, we'll talk a little about the buildings nowadays. Um, Mishabur Siv Cotton, we haven't finished the Shulchan Aruch, we'll come back to it because there's a separate halacha, the, the continuation. Mishabur Siv Cotton Chof Aleph, we have a chutz, Mishum Pirum Pirum So the reason why it's outside is to publicize the Nase. Chof Aleph, Ozo Keita, Demo Vais Pachula. Okay? Siv Cotton Chof Beis, we need Chotz, Abdena Bais Pachula, Vichat Suisain, Hoi Pesucha, Sushazam. Their yards were opened out, their courtyards opened out onto the Shushak Rabbim. Okay. It's talking about the person who lights, in, who lights by the window. It's talking about that he hasn't got 
an entrance to the to the chotzer or to the shul. So Rabbim, he only has goes from his room straight into the house. Therefore, he can't light um, in the house. That's not in the public place. Therefore, he rather lights by the window. Okay. The question is what to do nowadays. Okay. Now, um, it starts like this. We mentioned that in the times of the Sakona, in the, when it was a, when it was dangerous, they would like in, light indoors. There's a number of Rishonim that um, um, mentioned that the Minhag in their days was still to light indoors, even though there wasn't a Sakon. And they, they, they say they don't understand why. They, they think really it, sh- it should be better to light outside. However, people, I mean, why? The reason, not, not the reason, like the reason why is because people continue, to, continue to work, doing what they were used to doing. However, the Rishonim um, um, are not happy with this. They say that it's better to light outdoors. One should be lighting outdoors. However, it's clear the Minag was to light indoors. Okay? Um, so therefore, there are people that light outdoors nowadays because of that. Like Rabbi Yashav and Rosh Hashem and the Minag of Shalim, they were both Rabbi Yashav and Shalim. They both said they both lit outdoors and, and said one should light outdoors. There's no Sakona light nowadays. One should light by the entrance to his Chotzeh, where he's on to the Shosh Um There are two reasons why people light indoors nowadays. Number one is still continuing this Minag to light indoors, even though it's it's clearly not the best way to do it. No, it commits to... Indoors by a window. Mm, yeah, indoors I mean by the window. Right? Um, the, other, the other Indian is the Chazan Ish. The Chazan Ish says that one has to light um, on, by, by the entrance to one's property. One doesn't light, one doesn't put the, 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 the Chanukiah, the Manoga, in the middle of the street. One has to light by the entrance to one's property. By the entrance to his Chotzeh. Now, Chotzeh in the days of Chazal was part of the Ham. They just had a, a, a small, uh, one room. And a lot of what they did was outside in the chotzer. They would do the washing there, they were doing the cooking, the ovens were outdoors in the chotzer. It was like, a, it was like an extra room to the house. They were used it for all the regular things that one, done, that one did in the house. It's a courtyard? Mm? The, the courtyard, courtyard, yeah, the courtyard. That's right. so, um, <coughs> so he said that's why they lit the entrance to the chotzer. So he says nowadays, um, uh, the chadam medjugot, right, the, the stairwell, doesn't count as a hot, so that's not. It's part. That it's it's is it is owned in part by by each member of the building, but it's not somewhere where one uses it for one's. Um, one doesn't do any 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 um, uses, living uses there. One doesn't use it for living in any way. One just walks through it, and therefore he says that one shouldn't light by the entrance to the. Um, one shouldn't light by the entrance to the to the building, because it's as we said, it's not it's not like a hot in the time of Chazal. Okay, so those are the two reasons why people light um, still light indoors by the by the window. Okay, yeah. so therefore some poskim say one should light outdoors. Rabbi Shem um, and uh, Rabbi Yashav say one should light by the entrance to the building, to the street between the building and the street. Um, there are some poskim who, like, who, based on the Chazan issue, say one should light indoors. Um, Hasidim light indoors. They light by the by the entrance to the to the apartment between the apartment and the. And the stairwell, that's what I see them like. And lots of people like by the window, so there's, there's different opinions. And this is one of those uh, mitzvahs where there are different opinions. Whatever you do is right, there's no right or wrong. Um, if one does light by a window, um, it's often difficult, difficult to choose which window to light. Because um, they, when they lit indoors, even, sometimes they even placed it on the table, they didn't even light by a window. Um, then the ikka would be for the people inside the house. So therefore one should light it in the main room which is used by people inside the house, which it would be the living room. Um, however, we, we are, there's no sakona. We do, we do light by the window. People who light indoors are lighting by the window. They want as many people as possible in the Shusha Rabban to see it for Pusume Nisa. Therefore one should light at the window which is seen by the most amount of people. Often this is the same place. The window in the living room is the window which is most visible. Sometimes this is not the case. Um, and therefore, one should, uh, in, in each case, one should, one should, uh, one has to ask off exactly what to do. If uh, sometimes the window, which is most visible by the street, is in a place, place in the house where no one's going to see it, um, one has to weigh up um, um, what's best to do. Um, Yeah, that's, that's basically some of where to put them in there. Uh, I've um, seen people light outside of their doorway. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, like, for example, I have a, um, a front area, like a porch, where I put my sukkah. Uh, I should put it at the doorway, or I should put it at the, at the 
gate. Okay. So um, you, you have a private house, or it's a it's a, I'm a, a private house. It's a private house. Private house. So the, 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 the whole area in front of it belongs to you as well. So right. there's an entrance between that and the street. Right, there's like a metal gate. Right. There, there's right. an arch, right. Right. and then after that there's a metal right. gate. So it's best, it's best to light by that gate, by that gate that leads on to that. So like we said here in the, in the Shulchan Aruch, that you don't light between the entrance of the house and the right. yard. You light yeah, from the entrance from the yard and the street. So I should light by that gate. Okay. This means that the people in the house may not see the menorah. That's right. That's right. So the preference is for the street to see it than the people. That's right. The ikatakonda, the, 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 the main mitzvah was to light, to, to publicize the native people outside on the street. Which was, uh, they, they only switched to lighting indoors when there was a sakona, when it was dangerous to light outdoors. Then it switched to lighting indoors, and then it became uh, that the idea was to publicize the people in the house. But the original, uh, um, the original decree uh, um, the, the to, to of Chazal was to light outdoors to publicize the people on the street. Um, <coughs> so therefore, that, that, that seems that's the best thing to do to light outdoors. However, if, that, if people light indoors, that's also okay. There are opinions that one should light indoors. As we said, this is, this is one of those halachas where there seem to be many different opinions, um, and I can't really go wrong. Um, let's continue now. Let's continue with the Shulchan Aruch. Um, when in the middle of the Shulchan Aruch, when I'm the third, the fourth line, fifth line. Fifth line. One needs to have an additional light. In addition to the lights of the um, of the menorah, one has to have one additional light um, in order to have benefit, right? because one may not have benefit from the um, menorah. Therefore, one has to have an additional light to have, which one can use to have benefit, which one can use for light. Um, this is why we leave the shamash. Right? After we light the menorah, we leave the shamash lit. That's the additional light. Mesh madura in acher. If he has a, a madura bonfire to have light from, or, or in our case, if one has electric lights, then in tochen acher. But you're not going to have benefit from the um, from the menorah from the chanukiah. Therefore, one can have one doesn't need to have an extra light. In those days, important people wouldn't use bonfires. They would they would they would have the um, they wouldn't use the five days, they would, they would, they would use a, a candle to read by. And therefore, one well, we need to have an extra candle, because he's not going to read by the light of the... Um, an important person wouldn't read by the light of the fireplace. He would read by, um, by a candle, therefore he would have to have this extra candle. This is making the assumption you're lighting inside. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Um, if one's lighting outside, the, the door wouldn't help. Right. He would have to have an extra light, yes. Um, Okay. Let's continue. Sif Vav. Shulchan Aruch Sif Vav. Manichoy lemalo migimul tfachim. One must place it above three tfachim. Right? Three tfachim um, is uh, a tefach is eight centimeters. That's twenty-four centimeters. At least twenty-four centimeters in the ground. A mitzvah lanichoy lematom yud tfachim. And preferably, one should leave, one should place it um, lower than ten tfachim, meaning eighty centimeters. Between twenty-four and eighty centimeters is the ideal height. Um, of the lights. Vimanicho le malo miyot tfachim yotz, if it's above ten tfachim, he's yotz, he's fulfilled his obligation. Avilamanicho le malo mi chof amma, if he puts above twenty ammas, twenty cubits, right? each amma is approximately half a meter, so we're talking about above ten ammas, then he's yotz, and then lo yotz, then he's not, he hasn't fulfilled his obligation. So if you're in an apartment building that's more than twenty ammas high, you might as well just light it inside. That's correct. In Palmer building, about 20 amas high, has no advantage to people on the street. They're not going to see it because it's about 20 amas. And therefore, and there's no advantage lighting by the window, unless you have apartment buildings opposite that can see it. If you have people opposite, then for them it's on the eye level. So therefore, the possum say that, that that's, uh, that is okay. Uh, but if there's no apartment buildings opposite and it's above 20 amas, then there's no point lighting by the window. Uh, it says between which is usually the third, f- the, th- the third floor is usually about 20 amas. Between 24 and 80 centimeters is optimum? That's correct. So 80 centimeters is not even a meter? Correct. Okay. Correct. Correct. And above that yeah. is not preferable? That's correct. Wow. Unless one's lighting by the window and one needs people to see it, in which case right. if the window is above 10 tfachim, then above that 80 centimeters, then he would light by the window. 
But again, if he has an option, if he has the option of a window leading out to Shusagama, which is below 80 centimetres, that would be preferable. Right. So if one was lighting by an entrance, one places it in the, this height, between 24 and 80 centimetres. So if I'm putting a, a, a box outside, yes. uh, it should be at least uh, Gimel Tabachim above the ground? That's right. Uh, is, uh, is eight centimeters. Rav Chaim Noel, if his machok is how big a tefach is, the two main opinions are Rav Chaim Noel holds eight centimeters, and the Chazan Ishu holds slightly less than ten. So if you want to be the, the best to be used to the, the, if you want to be the Chazan Ishu as well, is to put above thirty, between thirty and eighty. Thirty would be three tefachim if you're the Chazan Ish, and eighty is already ten tefachim if you're Rav Chaim Noel. So between thirty and eighty, you covered everyone. Hmm? I have to put the box on top of something. That's right. Yeah. Um, let's see the Mishra will explain to us why this is, the reason for these halachas. Mishra will say, Kotm Chav Vav, Lamala Megimu Tvachim, Tchol Lamato Megimu Kelim Hini Chav Hini Chav Kaga. I believe beneath, beneath three Tvachim is considered on the ground. This is halacha, by, by many halachas we have this, that the belief three Tvachim is Ka'aros Mechto, it's called part of the ground. Part of the ground. We have, for example, uh, um, and the halachas of, on, on Tisha B'Av and on Oval is supposed to sit on the ground. Um, he's allowed to sit on a seat that's less than three tefachim, less than 24 centimetres, because as if he's sitting on the ground, that low is considered part of the ground. I think that's the bottom, that's the highest point that a wall of a sukkah, uh, the b- that's correct. can be separated it's from, from that's the correct. as well. That's correct, yeah, it's all part of the same that's right. Um, that's right. <coughs> um, let's continue. Um, <coughs> we're in Sifkot and Chavav, we read just, read just now. Sifkot and Chavav, that's about eight, uh, eight, seven lines from the top. Tchol emato midgimu kilo nech v'kaka, ve'en nikr shabal abay sini choyshom, ve'en mekom mokim b'di eved yotza. B'di eved is okay. Sifkot and Chavav zayin, lemato mid tfachim, t'ikr person maneis, why does one should one place it beneath, um, lower than 80 centimeters, lower than 10 tefachim? Because generally when one, one puts lights, one puts them high up. That's the generally where one puts lights. So we definitely put it low down so that people realize that this is different from all other lights. And when people are going to pay attention and realize that the reason why, 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 the reason why these lights were lit were in order to publicize, publicize the mace, publicize the miracle. That's why we dafka place it in a low place, because it's not the place where one generally place light, places lights. You generally, lights are placed in a high way up. Therefore, one definitely, the, the, one, we, 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 we put it low down so that people realize it's for the nose. He mentioned that lots of people who light indoors are not careful about this and, and, and put it higher than 10 to it is correct to be careful about this and place it beneath ten tefachim. If one is lighting by the window, as we mentioned, then one places it by the window, even if the window is above ten tefachim, one places it by the window. If one has a choice of two windows, both looking at the Shosh Rabbim, one should rather place it by the window which is beneath your ten Tfachim. If one is above your Tfachim and one is beneath ten um, Tfachim, one should place it um, beneath ten Tfachim. In the Shul, the Minak is dafka to place it um, high up. Um, he doesn't say why. Um, it, it could be the reason was because the, the menorah in the base in, in the base Amikdosh was high up. Yeah, for that could be that's why in the menorah in the in the base Aknesa the menorah is placed place it high, like the menorah in the base Amikdosh. Um, <coughs> let's continue now. So, Cotton Chofches Lemalo Mesumama. Why above twenty cubits? Above ten, um, ten uh, approximately ten, nine point eight meters is no good. To lo shalta be eino because people can't see it from the street. There's no difference if one is lighting um, outside or inside, it should not be above 20 amos. He has to light again with a bracha. He has to light again with a bracha. 
So the, okay. the menorah is, I don't know if it's true in Israel, it's new to me, but the menorahs that are very, very high up, people are on cranes lighting them and making the brachas. Is that a bracha vital? Excellent question. Um, and this is not just a question about that they're very high up. The question is that they're not lighting by anyone's house. Who's, who, who, right. One doesn't just light in the middle of a street. It's a public area. One's yeah. to light. Okay. So this is the problem. Um, <coughs> there is, there is a, I think the Moshe Feinstein has a tshuva. Um, maybe I'll try and print it out. Where he talks about lighting at public events. Right, which is similar to the lighting in the shul. Like we light in the shul when everyone's there, when everyone gathers together. Right. And if one has a big event in a hall, um, to light in a hall, to publicize it. He talks about that. And the, the lighting in, in, the, in the public place, in the middle of the street, would be based along those lines. But right. I guess what I'm asking, so, um, it's, it's two questions. One, the one that you've correctly... And the other one is that it's also too that, high. It's above 20 hours. Well, should you be making... You know, if it's a symbolic thing mm. where you just want people to be aware that it's Hanukkah, mm. um, is it appropriate to make a bracha? If it's just a symbolic thing, then no, one definitely shouldn't be making a bracha. One can only make a bracha um, if, it's, if it fulfills when the, the halacha. Yeah, that's correct. That's so correct. then if you make so I said a bracha. So, so that's what I said. So to make a bracha, um, whereas there's two issues. There's issues I, I mentioned. There's also the issue you mentioned above 10 hours. Right. Um, do they really do it above that high? They do it that high? Oh, yeah. Above three stories. Three. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. In malls and public places. And, yeah. and they light with a bracha that high? Yeah, they light it with a big crane. You know, yeah. They're in a basket of a big crane mm -hmm. doing it, with usually the mayor of the city. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I, I mean, I understand doing Once it. They have, Jew they have Jewish mayors. What? The mayor's Jewish? No. Well... He's the elected head of the city. Okay, and he's making the bracha? No, he's not making the bracha. The individual standing behind, next to him, who is Jewish, is making the bracha. The, the person behind makes the bracha, and then he doesn't, the Jew doesn't light at all? I'm not sure which one actually lights, but they're, so they're together. Okay. I would guess that the Jew is lighting. Oh, it's the Jew's lighting. Okay, he's making the bracha and the Jew's lighting. Okay. <laughs> just checking, because he told me the mayor's lighting, I got a bit worried that the... No, no, I don't okay. think the mayor's lighting. Okay, yeah, so, so the Jews... Uh, so the question is if you can make a book on that. Mm. And are there high, are there high buildings um, in the vicinity that are, that, that, that are close by that are on the same level as these lights? Sometimes yes, and sometimes no. Sometimes it's in a mall, you know, uh. sometimes it's... Well, in a mall, maybe also you might have a higher floor. Is it, if it's inside the mall, yeah, you got, it could be. Yeah. It could be that it's at least twenty from the, 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 the upper that's, level. That's possible. So then, that you'd have the then that would be okay. And we said we said the poskim would say that if you have um, buildings opposite, then that's okay because for those people, it's on their eye level. It's not for them. It's not about twenty hours. Okay. Last question. Uh, then does that person light a menorah at home and make a bracha as well? That's a good question. Um, <coughs> so that's 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 we're going to see in it. We're going to see. We're talking about the person lighting a shawl. Oh, we'll discuss yes. that. The okay. person is lighting a shawl. That's so someone lights a shawl here in, in Maariv. Can you go home and then light with the bracha? We're going to talk about it. When we talk about lighting a shawl, we'll talk okay. about that question.